Hello, welcome to a Ginge Ginge. Today I'm going to be collecting my third clutch of eggs. Um, again, this, this clutch is a bit like the last one, it's not going to be anything too exciting, it's just a, a straight Mojave bred to a, a straight clown, um, just to try and produce some, some hets for the future basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the eggs, give you like a little montage video sort of thing for that, and then I want to talk through why I'm making so many hets. Um, there is method to my madness and it is something that I think some people think it might be just a waste of time me doing it but it's in my opinion it's probably the best way to go about doing it so we'll get these eggs collected put them in the egg box get them in the incubator um, and then yeah I'll sort of talk you through the females that are coming up to uh, lay um, and why I'm basically doing what I'm doing so we get straight into these eggs and it, it looks good it looks like there's quite a few so I'm, I'm quite excited So that's the clutch pulled. As you can see, we've got nine eggs, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, obviously, it's just a Mojave to a clown, so I'm hoping at least half of them are gonna be Mojave. So that way I can have a couple of females to hold back. I'll probably hold a male back, and then the rest I probably will be passing on. Um, and as you saw at the end of that, I think I showed one of the eggs. So that was a, an egg from my previous clutch. So that was from my Super Phantom to a clown. Um, got five eggs. And they all looked absolutely brilliant at the beginning when I candled them. And then obviously it's been like, sort of, I don't know how many days it's been now. But um, you can see one of those eggs isn't looking too great. It's starting to turn a little bit yellow. Um, there's not any mould, it's just, I think the egg is seeping through a little bit. And when I've candled it, the, the veins have completely shrunken down. Um, they're not very strong at all, so I don't hold out any hope for that one, sadly. Um, I did dry it off, I put a little bit of foot powder on it just to sort of try and dry that air up and seal the egg up a little bit but to I think once the, the veins on the egg start to go and they, they start shriveling down I think that's when uh, it, it, you get to that point where the egg just it's just no return and at the end of the day if the egg on the inside is dying there's there's nothing you can do about it it's, it's, it's just one of them things at the end of the day but I'm not too worried about it I mean that will leave us with four eggs um, obviously it's a super phantom so all the babies are going to come out as phantom I'm just hoping I get a male and a female and then the other two wherever they are they'll be passed on so as long as I get a male and a female out of the clutch I'm, I'm completely happy with that 
But um, yeah, so I didn't want to go through the, the egg pulling. I normally do. If you watch my channel, then you know how I pull eggs. You know how all the processes I go through. But I just hope you enjoyed that little montage I tried putting together. Um, but yeah, the female's still in the water bowl soaking. So I'm going to get leave her in there for a little bit. She did have a little drink. Um, so yeah, she's going to be in there soaking away. I'm going to clean her tub up, get her back in, and once that's done, I'll sort of talk you through everything of why I'm making so many hets, basically. Um, it also gives you a sneak peek into all the females that I'm, I'm currently breeding this year. So let me quickly get this sorted, and we'll be right back into into the females. So here's Mum. I've got her back in the tub, um, and as you can see, if I pull pull the drawer out a little bit more, you can see she is super super skinny. Those nine eggs really took it out of her. Bless her. Um, I think she's oh god I wouldn't, I'm not going to weigh her because I don't really um I don't really weigh my females to be honest but she's she's definitely lost a bit so I'm definitely going to get a feed her within the next couple of days I and mean, if she doesn't take in the next couple of days I probably will put a live in just to try and spur on that feeding um just because I, I really want to get her back onto food as soon as possible so um yeah apart from that she's active she's had a drink which is great if you remember before she did have that little bit of stuck shed on her head that I mentioned um, that's completely gone now she had a little soak in the bowl and and that that fell off almost instantly so it wasn't anything serious um, but yeah, I just didn't want to put her in water at the time she uh, she ovulated but yeah now that she's in there she's got a nice clean bed I've sprayed it all down she's got a clean water bowl so we'll leave her to be and we'll move on to these females this is my big uh, VPI Exantic female I've got um, she looks quite brown on camera which is quite disappointing because if you see her in real life uh, these colours are actually a silver, they're not actually brown whatsoever. Um, but yeah, it's just again, it's how the camera makes these snakes look. But yeah, so this girl uh, last year was paired just to a straight clown for me. Um, I've got a couple of holdbacks. I've actually got uh, two female double head exotic clowns growing up. Um, but the plan I have for her is I'm actually going to put my pastel GHI clown to her in hopes that I can try and hit either a female pastel GHI or, or even a male pastel GHI which would be double head, uh, VPI, Xanic and Clown. Because I think if I can get Pastel, GHI and Clown all into Xanic, I think, I don't know, I've not seen one, but I think that could be a bit special. I want to get a few other geniuses. I want to get things like Yellow Belly into it. I want to get Fire into it. Um, maybe even Bamboo and Calico. Uh, Bamboo's quite a silvery looking snake. Anyway, so I think if you get that into Xanic, um, it, it's just going to make it even better, basically. So that's the sort of long-term project plans I have for this girl. This is my albino Mojave. She's actually been paired to my Mojave Hunter and Het albino, and I think he's possibly leopard as well. I'm not too sure, but I'm not too worried about the leopard side. But um, yeah, the, the hopes with this is to hopefully hit a cherry bomb, which is a super Mojave albino. Um, that would be absolutely brilliant, even if I get a few more albinos along the way, um, Mojave albinos, even if that male proves that to be a leopard, even if I hit a leopard albino, that would be absolutely brilliant. So that's the sort of plan I have for her. Um, after that, I'm not too sure what route I want to go down with the albino. Um, I'm thinking about maybe getting into clown, but I I'd rather go down the lavender albino side for clown. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure. I might plug uh, the year after this. Uh, depending on what I've made, um, I've got the Pastel GHI clown. I might plug him into that to make some double hits. Um, but then I may have produced something else that I can put to her. So I'm not too sure, but for now, I just want to try and hit those cherry bombs if I can make those super Mojave albinos. Um, hopefully I get a female to hold back, hopefully I get a male to hold back, plug them into other things and yeah, just sort of push that, that project a little bit further. But um, I might try and get, le if I can get leopard into it, if I could get a super Mojave leopard albino, that'd be oh, incredible. I don't think it's been made. I've, I've tried having a little look, I haven't found anything. Um, but yeah, that, that'd be something interesting to try and see. This is my pastel clown. I'm um, trying to get up to size again. Um, last year I bred her to my pastel blackhead hit hypo. Uh, she gave me six eggs and they were all slugs, which was really unfortunate. Um, again, it's just part of the hobby. But uh, I'm looking to breed her probably end of this year, I think she'll be looking to go. Um, and I'm actually going to be pairing her to my butter blitz that I've got. So um, hopefully I can try and hit uh, just some blitz genes on their own. But if I manage to hit a pastel butter blitz, that would be absolutely incredible because it would be 100% hit clown. Hopefully I hit a female, so I can hold that back to breed up, and then again, hopefully hit a male. Um, she's looking like she wants to eat me, because it is feed day tomorrow. But yeah, um, I've seen some Blitz clowns, they're basically the same as like the Hurricane, and Hurricane clowns look really, really cool. Um, eventually I'd want to try and get the Butter 
and the pasta out of it just because I'm not a big fan of butter and I'm not a big fan of pasta either so uh, but yeah that's the sort of future plan I think I'm going to close it because she's getting close to the camera this is my pastel hypo girl um, she is going to be going for me hopefully again this year and uh, yeah I'm I'm not too sure what to pair her to so I'm thinking about doing the same pairing as I did last year on Stephie as well Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of doing the same pairing as last year oh no 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 get oh it right hang on a minute I'm gonna be in trouble here she's literally ready to absolutely destroy me please don't buy this get back no it's not food look get back get back get back back but yeah with her I'm thinking about pairing her back up to the the pastel blackhead 100% hit hypo again just to try and see if I can hit more hypo blackheads basically I'm going to close this because she is a yeah this is one of my big uh, Mojave girls that I've got and as you can see she is currently being paired up to my pastel blackhead 100% uh, hit hypo um, I'm not really too bothered about the hypo side of this for now um, this is just because I, I want to try and hit some blackhead Mojaves obviously um, I don't really want to hit it with pasta, I want to try and get the pasta out of the mix if I can. Um, but yeah, again, this is just sort of trying to get more blackhead stuff into my collection, more female stuff that I can hold back. But you can see this female is absolutely huge at the minute. Um, I think she's pretty close to ovulating. That They've been locking regularly and the locks have been slowing down, she's off food. Um, so yeah, I've got a feeling that she will ovulate fairly soon. But yeah, really want to try and get blackhead and Mojave in with each other. And then eventually further down the line, I want to get that into clown. Um, yeah, the idea really is to get everything into clown base. Again, this it's just one of the things you have to keep keep pushing for, um, keep thinking about what you want for for future projects. And that's just some of the females that are down this line here. Um, down here, I've got a few more. So the bottom drawer, I've got a, a firefly female. Then it jumps up. I've got an Enchi. I've got a pewter. Moving up from there, I've got my super phantom. Then here I've got the uh, Cinnamon GHI girl, here I've got an albino, up here I've got a leopard spider and then up here I've got a pied. So yeah, there are a few of the girls I've got here. Um, over on this other wall, so in these tubs, these are just sort of grow out tubs for now, I'm still working on the rack for these. But again, these are all grow, grow on females that basically I'm, I'm wanting to breed in the future. Um, up here uh, I've got a special bamboo calico. This is a, a female clown that I'm trying to get up to size. Down here I've got a super yellow belly. This is a pastel 100% hit clown that I've produced. Uh, down here I've got a cinnamon pastel pinstripe. Down here I've got a Mojave red stripe. I'm really excited about this girl because she's getting very close to being up to size. I've got another pastel hit clown in here. Uh, I've got another clown female in this tub that I'm sort of trying to get up to size. Up here I've got an extremely dark GHR Mojave girl. Um, I don't want to get out because it messes all these wires up, but you, if you go through my Instagram, you'll be able to see it. But up there, very, very dark GHR Mojave girl. Um, and then up here, I've got a black pastel mahogany. So these are all females that are coming up for future breeding. Um, and as I said, a lot of the stuff I'm working with, I am trying to get into clown and just making as many hits as I can. Now, excuse the wardrobe change, it was it's ridiculously high. It's like 80. I think it's like 82 degrees Fahrenheit out here in a minute, so it's extremely hot. So I had to get a jump off because I was just pouring. But, um, so as you can see, I've got a lot of my collection. There's, there's a few more I haven't shown. Um, I've got some down here that they're just not big enough. Basically, it's not worth showing them just yet. But a lot of my stuff is quite basic. Um, and the reason I've gone basic is because I want to try and make everything myself. I, I've said this in previous videos. I could All the money I've spent on all these animals, some I've produced, some I've bought. I could have gone out and bought four or five gene animal that I wanted to produce in the long run, but for me, I just I just don't get satisfaction out of that. For me, I want to know that I've made that animal, I know what's in that animal, I know where it's come from, um, and yeah, I just get more satisfaction out of that. And the other thing is, like I said in one of my previous videos, I'm not great at ID in snakes. Um, you could put like a three gene snake in front of me, I might get one or two, I'll probably struggle with a third. Um, and yeah, it's just something that I want to build up my own knowledge as well. So. Building up all these bases, I'm going to get single gene hets, maybe double gene hets. I know what that double gene looks like. So when I then put two more genes into it, I know what they look like. And then I can sort of work out how they all interact with each other. The other thing is I, I basically want to try and hit one of every gene or two genes in one snake of pretty much everything I've got in my collection. And as long as I've sort of got a female that I can hold on to grow on and I've got a male, it sort of means that I've got all the ingredients that I can basically make whatever I want. So if I want to sort of breed my 
my Harvey Red Stripe female I've got down here. So I might chuck the GHI to her. So it's Pastel GHI Clown bred to a Mojave Red Stripe. So if I could hit a Mojave Red Stripe Pastel GHI, it's gonna be 100% Het Clown. I've got a couple of clown females over here, I've got a couple of clown females over here, and I've got a couple of Het Clown females. I can then chuck that back to that single gene female, and yeah, I'll get a few genes here and there, but there's a chance I could hit that all gene animal as well. Um, and for me, again, it's just about building those blocks up, starting from nothing, and just, just enjoying it. I'm not in a race, I don't care what people are breeding and making. I, I look at most people's stuff and I, I probably don't even like. It's not that I don't like it, it's just it's not the stuff that I want to be producing. I, I probably say 80% of the stuff that I see, I, I look at it, I think, yeah, I can appreciate it, it looks good, but it's just not what I want to produce. So I want to try and get as many of the base layers as I can as possible in place and then I can just mix and match and do my own thing and if I think this is going to look better with this gene or that's going to look better with this gene then I don't have to worry about trying to produce it with three or four genes in the mix and hoping I hit it or going out and buying that gene I want to I want to do it for myself if, if that's all making sense I'm probably talking absolute rubbish um, but I hope you're kind of getting at what I'm trying to say I want to make everything myself um, and then just push forward that way so um, yeah, that's that's basically most of the females I've got. Like I said, there's a few more down here. I've got some lavender albino stuff, uh, more mahogany, champagne, all those little bits, but they're just not up to size just yet. So they're, they're things that are coming up for the future. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It sort of shows you a little bit what I'm about, um, why I'm making so many hets things like that, it's, it's just for my own benefit basically. And I think it's quite important if you make your own foundations, um, then it's gonna give you a stronger future if that makes sense. Because you can sort of have a clutch, pick out the snakes that you think look the best, because it it's all about trying to keep the best quality you can and keeping that quality in your collection to move on. But um, yeah, so I'm just trying to basically build my foundations, get everything I want in my collection and then just start mixing it all together and, and going from there. So yeah, that's 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 my my plan basically moving forward. Um, they always change, plans always change. I don't care who you are, what you're aiming for, you're gonna see something pop up and your plans will change. That's, that's just the nature of it. But um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm basically doing. So I hope you enjoyed this little snippet. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.